Now we can start. So today we're going to go over continuity. So basically, here's the goals. Um, I don't know. Do you want me to read these to you or do you want me to just leave them on the screen and let you read them yourself? I'm not really sure. Um, so we're going to understand three conditions for continuity to, of a point, define continuity on an interval, discuss the limits of a composition of functions, understand which class of functions are continuous and have and which have discontinuities, and then state and use the intermediate value theorem. That's basically what we're going to do today. So we're going to start with what is the definition, with the definition, what is continuity? So continuity at a point, a function is continuous if at A, so basically, let's just draw, whenever you see a definition, probably it's easier to start drawing a picture. So let's say I have a graph like this, and here's A. So here's, basically it's saying, as I come to this point from this side, and as I come into this point from the other side, the limit has to equal F of A, right? For any point, if F is not continuous at A, then A is a point of discontinuity. So for example, if I had, hold on, a graph, and I have an open circle here, now it's dis now it doesn't have a continuity, it's discontinuous, okay? So is H continuous at X equals zero? So we look on this graph and here's the, here's the actual function that this graph is of. So we're saying this, this funky curve is actually X sine of one over X, but X can't be zero because if X is zero, one over X becomes undefined, correct? But I can, so if I were to draw this graph, it would have an open circle there. But, oh, but I'm saying, okay, now what I want to do is I'm just going to fill in that point. So now there's no point of discontinuity. It's continuous at X equals zero because I put in this part into the function. Does that make sense? Yes. All right. Yeah. Very good. Now you do have to know this definition. I. I wouldn't say that you need to know it word for word, but pretty close to it because it actually says a lot of important information. So a function f is continuous at x equals c if the following three conditions exist. So if I ask you to uh, prove that something is continuous, you basically have to do these three things. And all of those three things have to, have to be present. So for example, well, I, I'll give you more examples later, but f of c is defined. So if I wanna know if a function is continuous, it's gotta be defined at that particular point, right? Also, the limit has to exist. So the limit as x approaches that point of f of x exists. And notice this equals this. If they're different, it's gonna be discontinuous. So let's, let's see how it goes, okay? And if you, if you have the graph, what you wanna think of geometrically is you can think of a function that's continuous at every number in an interval as a function whose graph has no break in it. So basically, if I can draw the graph without lifting my pen from the paper, I have a continuous function. That should be a little easier. So if you see something, you should be able to decide. All right. So here we have a figure it shows the graph of a function f at which, at which numbers is f discontinuous. So tell me some places where this is discontinuous. At one. At one. So if I want to know at x equals one, I can say this function is discontinuous. Let's show why. So number one says f of c, and in this case, my c is one, exists. So does f of one exist? No. 
No. So right away, number one doesn't hold. So I can say because the number one doesn't hold, it's not continuous. Okay. Everybody understand that? Yes. Okay, yeah. good. Where's another point of discontinuity? X is equal three. X equals three. So let's see why, which, which one of these is going to fail? When Y is equal to um, so, something greater than one. Well, let's see. So we have F of three. Does F of three exist? Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So that's, not, that's not a problem. The second one says that the limit as X approaches three of F of three exists. Is that true? No. No, so this one fails now because as I, as I, if I come to three from the left, or I could say f of x, sorry. So what does that equal? What's the limit as x approaches three from the left? Well, it doesn't have a number. Let's call this negative one. So it's equal to negative one, right? Yes. I'll call that three. So I can say the limit as X approaches three from the right, that's gonna equal, I just wrote it down for you. So it's gonna equal three. So because these don't, these are not the same, the limit doesn't exist. So right there, I know that. Okay, let's do, let's do the next one. Let's do, uh, so the next one is gonna be at five, right? So number one, does F of five exist? Yes. Okay. Check. Two, does the limit, what's the limit as X approaches five of F of X? Does it have a limit? Yes. Yes, it does have a limit. We'll call it two, right? And then three, does the limit as X approaches five of F of X equal F of five? No. No, so this one now fails. So we've had an example of when the first one fails, when the second one fails, and when the third one fails. So do you understand now the three different possibilities for something not being continuous? Yeah. Any questions? Can you explain the third reason why it's not continuous again, please? Sure. So um, what's the limit as, F of, uh, as X approaches five of F of X? Two. Two. Good. And what's F of five? Oh, you. Here, I'll put this. What's F of five? F of five, I see a hole there at four. Yeah, see F of five equals four. It's right there. So this equals four, right? F okay. of five, sorry. F of five equals four. And two doesn't equal four. So therefore it's not continuous. Okay, perfect, thank you. Oh, you're very welcome. All right, so we have a couple of different kinds of discontinuities. The first one here is called the removable discontinuity because I actually know what point would make it continuous, right? I can just fill in this hole and now I have a continuous function. So. That's called a removable discontinuity. The second one right here is a jump discontinuity because literally it just jumps to another spot. We can't remove that discontinuity because they don't connect, okay? And the third one has an infinite discontinuity. Again, it's not removable because it has that asymptote there, okay? And here's the definitions, um, but again, I don't care so much about the definitions for this one as I do about the definitions of continuity. We can go over this. So F has a removable discontinuity if the limit exists, which it does for the first for A. Um, so it's removable because the limit exists. So let's just say right here, that's the main point, okay? If it has a jump discontinuity, the limit from the left and the limit from the right both exist, but they're not equal, okay? And for an infinite discontinuity, we have 
the limit approaching positive or ne negative infinity from both sides. And we basically call that an if infinite discontinuity. It doesn't have to be from both sides, by the way, sorry. It can be just from one side or the other, okay? Is that clear? Yes. Yes. Thank you. I'm sorry to keep asking, but like if I was in a room, I could see your faces and I kind of see who didn't understand, but I can't see anything. So I'm just going to keep asking. I hope it's okay. So is this function continuous? No. It's not continuous, right? Where, where, is, where do you think it's not continuous? X equals four. X equals four. Good. X equals four. We're saying it's not continuous. Should we find out which one fails? So number one, does F of four exist? Yes. Okay. Yes. What's it equal? One. F one. of four equals one. Second one, does the limit as X approaches four of F of X equal, uh, is, is that, is, is there a limit? Does the limit exist here? I guess we used to say, does it exist? Yes. It does. What is it equal? Negative two. Exactly. The third one, does the limit as X approaches four of F of X equal F of four? No. Excuse me? No. No, so that's where it fails, number three. So you see how these work? Yes. Okay, good. Um, so this function can be made to be continuous by defining or redefining a single point. Basically, if I were to have this function, I could just say, well, let's just make f of four equal to negative two, and then we would fill in that point and we would get rid of that one. Now it's just continuous. So with removable discontinuities, I just, I'm trying to plug a hole, right? That's it. I'm not trying to move entire lines or graphs, just plugging in a hole. Um, do you feel like you get it? You don't need me to keep doing these, right? So far you got what we're doing or do you want me to do more examples? It's up to you. You can do a one question. more. Excuse me, does anybody want me to do more examples? Let me start there. Okay, I, I think that's a no. So let's go on. Wait, I have a question. If yes. the, like If the situation occurred where it was like the, the limits coming from let's say like a really high Y value and it goes down and it flattens out into a straight line. Would that still count as a limit? Even though all the value, like let's just say the value of three of X, you know, at X three, X four, X five is all like Y one. So like it would be a straight line like that. Yeah. Coming from like, yeah. So, so it, let's just say, Let's say we have a graph that looks like this. Is that something that yeah, you're talking exactly. about? Yeah, exactly. Okay, good. So think about it like this. Can I draw this graph without lifting my pen? Yes. It's continuous. I okay. don't have a place here that's not continuous. Because even if this, let's say this is one, as I come into four from both sides, I still the limit is there. F of four equals one. The limit as X approaches four of this function is equal to four. And th that means that, and since the limit equals the value, it's continuous. All right, thank you. That, that makes sense? Yeah, yes. Yeah, okay, perfect. Um, I, I don't know that we need to keep doing that. So let's just continue on. So continuity rules. If f and g are continuous at some point a, then the following functions are also continuous at a. So we're just going to assume c is some constant. It's not another function. And n is, uh, n is greater than zero. So if I add two continuous functions, it's still going to be continuous. If I subtract two continuous functions, it's still going to be continuous. If I multiply a function by a constant, 
again, the same, multiply two functions together. I divide two functions as long as the denominator is not equal to zero and I take any function to a power, it's also continuous. Can anybody tell me like in maybe one sentence why it's continuous for all these functions? Well, think about any point, take any point on both functions. They exist on both, both functions, right? Because it's continuous on some interval, that point has to exist on both functions. Is that correct? Do you understand what I mean? Because yeah. if it doesn't exist in one place, then it's not continuous. That function's not continuous, right? Make sense? Yeah. Okay, good. So if, let's say I have two continuous functions. They're both continuous. If I add or subtract them, it's still defined at every point. If I multiply or divide them, it's still defined at every point. For this function, it wouldn't be defined here because one of the functions is zero. As long as it's not, actually, it may be defined as long as it's not in the denominator of this function. Like so if, if this is f of x and this is g of x, this g of x could not be in the denominator because it's going through zero. So it's somewhere it would be not defined. But other than that, as long as something is defined everywhere, if I multiply it by something, if I take it to a power, it doesn't matter, right? So that's, so it's always continuous for all these different places. So we talked about what is a polynomial and what's a rational function. Who can tell me what's a polynomial? Anybody? Is this a, is this a polynomial? No. Thank you. <laughs> is this a polynomial? No. Okay, thank you. Does everybody know why those are not? Here we would have x to the minus one and that's the wrong power. It has to be an integer. And here we would have x to the one half. Again, that's not an integer. So neither one of those is a polynomial. And rational functions are polynomials over polynomials. All right, so a function is continuous from the right at a point A if the limit as X approaches A from the right of F of X equals F of A. And similarly, the same thing is true from the left. And a function is continuous on an interval if it's continuous at every number in the interval, okay? And so if F is defined only on one side of an endpoint interval, so what I mean by that is this picture, this function right here in the middle, this part of the function is not defined at its endpoints, okay? So let's see what it says. It says if f is defined only on one side of an, of an endpoint of the interval, we understand con continuous at the endpoint to be continuous from the right or continuous from the left. So for example, if I have this, this picture right here, this is continuous going this way from the right and continuous this way coming from the left, right? But we don't have any continuity from of this part of the graph. There's no continuity from coming in from the left or from here from the right, okay? Because we have these open interval, these open endpoints. Oh, here's a better picture. So continuity from the right, continuity from the left and two sided continuity would be in the middle. I know what's happening on both sides of my point. Okay. All right, so now we have this function. Determine if f is continuous at a equals, my thing is too low, what does that say? At a equals one, does that say one? Yes, it's a one. I have something up top here, I'll move it down. There we go. Okay, so how would I figure out if, if this function is continuous at one? Any ideas? Would you plug one in? Let's do it. So if I plug one in here, oh, let's see, do I have, yeah. If I plug one in here, I get zero over zero. Well, that didn't work out real well. Anything else I can do? Take the conjugate or? Um, you could so factor. I could factor it, right? I can say f of x is equal to x plus one over x minus one. 
I'm sorry, times x minus one over x minus one. And what can I do now? As long as x doesn't equal one, I can cancel these. Is that clear? I couldn't cancel it if I'm if f, x didn't equal one. If x equals one, that wouldn't work. But I can cancel because x doesn't equal one. So I can say here that the limit as x approaches one of f of x is equal to what? X plus one. Which is two, right? Because X is now one for the top part. So for here, for the, I'm sorry, for the top here, I can say F of one equals one, I'm sorry, equals two, but it's a whole. If it was there, it would equal two, right? Does that make sense? So basically, if I were to graph this, I have a line, x plus 1. Here's my, here's my uh, y-intercept. Here's my line. And at x equals 1, I have, ah, that's not what I wanted to do. I know what to do. OK. So at x equals 1, I have a hole, right? That's what I, that's what it would look like if I graph the top part of that function. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay, good. This is two. And here's three. But at x equals one, that point is actually right here. So we still have a function that's not continuous. Yes? So what I need to do, what could I do, what, how could I redefine this function to make it continuous at A equals one? You could raise it. I could what? You could uh, uh, raise it up plus uh, two or one. I can't, really tell. I, I can't really change the top part of the function. The numerator, uh, I can't really change this because then if I change something to two, it wouldn't, um, it wouldn't cancel, right? Uh, I meant in the aspect of like, uh, like how you can slide a graph up um, when you add you know, three, like on a normal graph. Does that make sense? Is that Frank? Yes. Yeah, I'm sorry, Frank. I'm not sure exactly what you're saying. Yeah, um, never mind then. <laughs> um, uh, you might be right. I just don't understand. Does um, anybody else? Uh, Go ahead. Yeah, I, I can't explain it well then. Does anybody else have any? I'm not saying you're wrong. I just don't know. Does anybody else have any ideas? Add the functions together. I, I'm not going to add them because if I added them, I don't really have something's not defined here this 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 function this part of the function the top part of the function is not actually defined at one is it so and if i added them together I, I, what am i adding the three to would you be able to slide the continuous or the discontinuous function upwards is what i like was trying to convey uh, on the I axis. can't because well, I'd have to change the entire function. Yeah. So I, I'm I'm not, I don't want to change the entire function. Would you set them equal to each other? Um. What do you mean exactly by that? Hey, um. You want to say x squared minus one over x minus one equals three? I guess something like that, sure. Or like the simplified form, maybe. Well, I let don't... me make it a little easier. Does anybody else have any ideas? I would say probably not for those that answer. Any other ideas before I tell you? Well, I have this graph, this line, and all I really want to do is fill in that point, don't I? And then I have a continuous function if I fill in that point. Does everybody see that? 
Yeah. Yep. Okay, so why can't I just change this three to a two? And now I have my graph and I don't, from the top part here, I don't have, I have X is not equal to one. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna define when X equals one, I'm gonna say it's two and that is exactly where it should be. And now this point isn't there. So I ne I've, created, I've created a function that's continuous by just changing that three to a two. Do y'all see that? Yeah. Is there any questions about this? Okay. All right, so now we wanna find a value of K that makes this function continuous. Cause I don't know what, if it's continuous or not. Where, where is the possibility that it wouldn't be continuous? Is this, let me ask another, let me ask it a different way. Is this function continuous between zero and three? Yes. Okay, I agree. There's no problem there. There's nothing that would cause it to make a hole or an asymptote or anything like that, right? Is this function continuous between three and 10? No, because of three. Because of the last Well, it's, it's continuous. It's continu it is continuous in this open interval between three and 10. Okay. okay. Do you see that? Like I can, I can draw a graph of this function. So if I were to, that's not the color. If I were to draw a graph of this function, so between zero and three, I have the square root of something, right? So it's gonna start here and it's gonna go up and this is gonna be an open circle at zero. That's an open circle at zero. Does that make sense? I don't know what K is, but whatever it is, it's gonna have that shape because that's what square root looks like. Do y'all agree? Yeah. Okay, good. Now from three to 10, what's this graph gonna look like? A line going uh, positive from left to right. Yes, to and where is it going to start at? Where Where am I starting? Where's my starting uh, y value? Zero comma one. It would be at one. It would be not one. It would be no, no, no. It's starting at three. So if I plug in three here, I would start at four, right? But it would be an open circle at four. Does that make sense? Does that make sense, guys? Yes. Yeah. Okay, good. And then it's going to be a line, right? Now, what's the problem here? The problem is I have a discontinuity where? 11? Why That's 11? It's not even defined at 11. It's only defined between 0 and 10. Maybe at 4, like y equals 4. What's, so we're, we, what about the x value? It's a 3. At three, so it's so f of three has is where the problem is, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. So basically, for the top for the top function, top of the function, or whatever we would say, however we would say it, this is equal to the square root of k x. But I want to know what it is at three. So it's equal to the square root of three k, right? All right. Now, what I really want to have happen here is I would really like it if this point started where this point ended. Wouldn't that be helpful? Or I maybe I could write it more like this point has got to reach up to where this point is and they can they can connect somehow. Do you all see what I'm saying? Yeah. All right, well, so how are we gonna connect them? Well, what I really want is at three for those values to be the same. So can't I say, let's let the square root of three at 3K 
equal four because now I'm plugging three in for X. And now I can solve for K. So let's do it. We square both sides. We divide both sides by three. We get K equals 16 thirds. So if I have the square root of 16 thirds X for instead of this, at three, I have the square root of 16, which is four. And at three, I have three plus one, which is four. So now I do have the situation where the graphs connect at three. Was that clear? Yeah. Is there any questions about this? So you wanted to, so you said, three square root of three K equals four. Cause you want to get when X is three, you wanted to get the top part of the graph at four, right? Yeah. I need both of the, yes. I need them to connect here. It's kind of like, imagine you were building a bridge coming in from this side, like here's my land and here's my land. And I started building bridges from both sides. It wouldn't be too good if all of a sudden this bridge went down here and this bridge went up here, right? Because then I, I wouldn't be able to actually get across the river. But if I were to make sure that I had all the values where they actually connected, right here is what I'm looking for. I want to make sure right in where, they're, where, they're, where they need to connect that they do connect. Yes? Yeah, okay. So it's okay. connect them and you set them equal to each other? Yes, but at, just at that one point, because this is the point where they change from one graph to the other graph. All uh, right. See that? So at that point, if I don't get it right, like if I'm building my bridge and I'm coming in over from this side and I'm, and I'm just building it, I mean, I'm not, there's no way I can not have it be continuous because I wouldn't be able to get to the next place to keep going, right? And the same thing is true over here. Like if I'm coming in from one side or the other, it's definitely continuous. We just have to make sure when we get to the place where it could be a break, that there isn't one. Yes? Yes. Okay. Does that handle the questions from everybody or understanding from everybody? Okay. So now we have what we call composition of functions. You all know what composition of functions are. It's when you have f composed with g or f of g of x or g of f of x, it doesn't really matter. So if g of x is continuous at a and f of x is also continuous at a, then the, com the composition of the two functions is also continuous. Also, if the limit of g of x as x approaches a equals some limit and f is continuous at that value, then we can say the limit of f of g of x equals the function of the limit. So you can put this limit inside instead of, it doesn't have to always be, the limit doesn't necessarily have to be um, on the outside of a composition. The limit basically has to be referring to any value of X, if I'm saying X is approaching a value. So for example, if I say the limit, what I'm trying to say is the limit as X approaches A of three X is equal to three times the limit as X approaches A of X, because three is not affected by this limit. So we don't have to worry about it. I cannot say, I cannot say that it's equal to X times the limit as X approaches a of three. That is not true because the part that I'm concerned about is the X and it's outside of the limit. Okay. So here's, here's a visual representation of it. If I have a function, here's my F of X and then I compose it with G of X, I get to this point, but F of G of X can go directly there. And it's also continuous. That's basically the picture of what that last, uh, PowerPoint slide said. Okay, well, we're almost done. Does any questions before I go on to the next thing? Cause I'm actually at the last thing that we're gonna work on today. All right. 
me get my pen back. Okay, so the intermediate value theorem for continuous functions. So if we have a function y equals f of x and it's continuous on this open interval. So here we're saying, here's the interval that it's continuous on. Actually, it's not continuous on the closed interval, sorry. It's continuous on this interval from A to B closed. And notice the blue line is that function and it takes on every value between A and B. So if I wanna know if there's some value if I want to know, so basically, let's say this is three and this is four, and I want to know if three and a half exists, y equals three and a half exists on this function. Well, I know it does because it's continuous from A to B, and y sub zero is between three and four. Okay, there's no way if, a, if I have a continuous function that I can get from here to here without passing through this y sub zero point. Think of it like this. If, you have, if you're in an elevator, right? And you wanna go to the fourth floor, well, hopefully you're in an elevator that is a continuous function. Because if it's not, you're in trouble, right? There, it exists at every point from the ground floor to the third floor. And I wanna know, are you gonna pass through the second floor? What's, what are you gonna answer me? Yeah. Of course, because you can't get from zero to three without passing through two, right? Right. So that's what the intermediate value theorem says, that if I have a continuous function, that I am going to pass through every point between two different y values. Okay? So let's see if we can figure out, um, using the intermediate value theorem, I want to know if there's a root um, uh, use the intermediate value theorem to show there is a root to this function on this interval. So if I want to know if there's um, if this exists on this interval between zero and one, basically I wouldn't know how to. So when it says a root, I want to know does e to the x minus three plus two x equals zero exist, right? Because that's what a root is. It's the same as an x-intercept. So how would I decide if that exists? I can't factor it. I don't want to do trial and error. I don't want to know. I don't want to know if, you know, what it is. I don't, I don't even know if it exists. So does anybody have any ideas what I could do to see if it does exist? Well, let's just say the graph of this, I don't know, looks something like that. Okay. And so between zero and one, here's zero, here's one, we have this closed interval. And I wanna know if anywhere this graph, well, let's say it looks more like this. Okay, because it, if otherwise it, we wouldn't know if it, if, if it had a zero. So let's say it looks like that. How do I find out if it has a zero or if there even is a zero or what the zero is? Is there any, does anybody have any ideas? Well, I need to know if there's some point where y equals zero, don't I? Yeah. All right, so let's see, what is, what is um, f of zero? So we're gonna, cause here's my interval. So let's plug in zero for, for x. So I have e to the zero minus three plus two times zero, that equals what? So this is equal to one minus three plus zero. So this equals negative two. Okay, so let's do this. I'm gonna draw a better graph. Let's see. So I know that when x equals zero, y equals negative two, right? Hold on, let me just see if it's someone from the class. I can't read something. Hold on. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Okay. Um, does that make sense? So I have this point right here. 
Now let's plug in e of one minus three plus two times one. So that's gonna equal e minus three plus two is minus one. What's e gonna be approximately? 1.7. Well, this, yeah, 2.7 is e, 2.7 minus one is 1.7. So let's say this is 1.7. I know it's equal to that point. Here, let me get a different color. Let's say it's here and here. And I wanna know, does, does this have a root between zero and one? What, what am I actually asking? Does it cross the X? Does it cross the X? So if it's a continuous function, will this cross the X axis? Yes. yes. It has to, there's no way I can get from that point to that point without crossing the X axis as long as I have a continuous function. Do you all agree? Yeah. Yes. Okay. That's what the intermediate value theorem says. And it's really handy, not for us necessarily in this class, but in general, if you want to find, if, find out if there's a solution to this equation right here, how else would you be able to do it? You want to be able to know, first we want to know, is there some possibility that there's a root between zero and one? If there is, and I wanted to find it, let's say I was a computer program, what would I do next? Any ideas? Well, I can shorten the interval. I can say, well, there is one between zero and one. Let's see if there's one between zero and one half. If there's not one between zero and one half, like let's say if I plugged in one half, it was still below the x-axis, which made it negative. Then I would say, oh, okay, it's not here. So now it's between one half and one, right? So now I've narrowed down where that root is. And I can continue to do that until I find it. So this would be more of a trial and error type of thing. But do you understand the point of this and how I can use it? Yes. yes. Okay, very good. Is there any questions about anything we went over today? Okay, I guess we're done then. Hold on. Let me stop sharing. Let me stop recording.